Welcome to the Genealogy Gems Podcast, providing quick and innovative ways to make the absolute most out of your research time and creative ideas for sharing and displaying your family history. I'm your host, Lisa Louise Cook. Prizes, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, you guys, thank you so, so much. It, it's uh, wonderful be, to be doing the show live, the very first live Genealogy Gems podcast episode. Um, I'm excited about doing it, and it's really nice because I've got some friendly faces in the audience who are uh, cheering us on. So, um, I know that you've had a really long but fruitful day, right, at the conference. (laughs) A lot of heads shaking, yes. And um, I'm really honored that you were willing to stay on into the evening. I know, uh, hey, it's a chance to put your feet up. You're you're off your feet. And uh, you can come in and and have some time together, which is really nice as well. So uh, I'm very excited about that. Are you having fun so far? Yes? You know, the thing is, I have never seen this many genealogists in one room without a computer or a microfilm reader anywhere. (laughs) And and they're still paying attention. This is awesome. (laughs) Okay, great. Well, as you know, the Genealogy Gems podcast is a podcast, and essentially what that means is it's an online radio show. I kind of call it genealogy radio online, but all the time. So you don't have to tune in at a certain time or a certain date. It's pre-recorded. But the general format of it is basically the same. And in each episode, what we're trying to do is to bring you the latest information about what's going on in genealogy, uh, research tips. I, I always have the pleasure of being able to go around and interview the fantastic speakers Um, that we have here at the conferences and kind of get the the inside scoop on their various topics of expertise. So don't panic. If you didn't get to every single class, you're probably going to hear from these people at some point during the year on the show. The show is really about bringing you the best of the best, the best that we can find that hopefully is going to help you get the most out of your research, which is why it's the gems, the best gems. So um, I guess one of the first things I was kind of curious about was, raise your hand if you've actually heard the podcast before. That's a lot. That's maybe a third. Wow, that's awesome. And what I'm really hoping tonight, well, and I'm wondering too now, you can be honest. If you've heard a podcast of any podcast, have you listened to any kind of podcast at some point, raise your hand. Any more? About the same. A couple more, maybe. <laughs> okay, good. Well, what, what we're hoping to do is to convert you all and uh, have you get excited about the possibility of what you can listen to online for free. Uh, it's a terrific resource, and there's a lot of different podcasts out there, but of course, we would love to have you listen to ours as well. You know, I'm so used to recording the show. I, I do it from home, and I have a home office that's set up, looks like a little you know, radio booth or whatever. And there are times when I'm, I'm recording the show, and I, I, I told Lacey, I just wonder, am I just in here talking to myself? Or, you know, you just feel really strange after a while. And for me, that is why when Holly mentioned the idea of doing a live show like this, I just thought, oh, this is a chance to get that energy. I kind of have the high school theater background, and it's wonderful when you have the audience here. And they really do listen, they I do. told you. <laughs> They do. More so than our dog at home, anyway. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you've probably heard my dog and my cat once in a while in the background of the show. And, of course, you've met my lovely daughter, Lacey Cook. Please give her a round of applause. Yes. You don't get a prize for that one, though. <laughs> she will be our stage manager. She's going to be conducting things and in charge tonight. And um, I am so really thrilled that she's here. We, we had a long night. Uh, we got into the hotel about 3 a.m. last night. And it was just one comedy after another. But she has been chipper and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what I wanted to do was get a little interactive. This is selfish on my part because I don't get a chance as much to do it uh, from my home office. I do get a chance to get emails from you and to get your voicemails. But just wanted to interact a little bit here and, and to find out, um, first of all, 
Raise your hand if this is your very first genealogy conference or convention of any type. A lot of newbies. Right. Wonderful. <laughs> you think you'll come back? That's terrific. Lacey, I would love to have you go in because I want to ask some questions. So as I had some things on my mind, um, I was curious if any, anybody, just raise your hand if you're interested in, in chiming in. What prompted you to come to this expo, particularly if you're a newbie, if this is your first time? What caught your attention? Your podcast. Oh. <laughs> Did you hear Holly? the correct answer. <laughs> Got another one in the back. Okay. Yeah, because it's, it's, we're, you know, Holly does an amazing job of getting the word out. We're kind of curious. My cousin, six generations back, said he was coming and I'd get to meet him. So we came together. Got both of them here. That's a fantastic reason. Um, and I'm curious, which classes have you attended so far? Or do you have a favorite one? Have you been to my class? <laughs> no, but I'm kind of curious, which classes have you picked from? There's so many to pick from, aren't there? It's hard to pick. And I'm curious what you've um, attended so far and what you've enjoyed. Oh, somebody's been to a I'll class. Pick someone at random if you don't raise your hand. <laughs> the federal census. The, the, federal the federal census. Yeah. Got some more. Digitizing. Ooh. Learning about Twitter. Learning about hey, Twitter. Hey, microphone's over here, folks. <laughs> hey, they're participating. Uh, I went to Leland Meitzer, Meitzler's uh, organization one. I think, you know, all of us as genealogists, we always need to keep organized. And since I'm still kind of brand new at this, you know, I needed that, and it was great. That's wonderful. And that is Mr. A.C. Ivory. He is actually uh, one of the winners of the free tickets that I gave away on the podcast. So we're so happy that you're here. <laughs> and i um, interested to know specifically, because you know it's, it's one thing to come and get excited and you meet people. And, but what, what have you learned? What's the gem that you picked up at some point today that you wrote down when I am doing that when I get home? Oh, she's right got here. one. I Google. I am hooked. I am going home immediately. I want a toolbar, but I want yours. Okay. It's free. I tried to, I tried to explain it to my husband, and I, I'm just hoping that your handout is good enough that I can translate it to, the, to him when we go home. You bet. Husband, try it out. It's free. You can just click on it and, and get the, She's talking about the, the toolbar. I have a Genealogy Gems podcast toolbar, so you can literally attach it to your browser, and then as you go wandering around the internet, you can just take me along with you and listen to the show or whatever. It's got some, some fun buttons on it. Great, so she's gonna do iGoogle. What other gems have you picked up out of your classes? Arlene Urkel's class on uh, Virginia. I thought I knew Virginia, but I didn't know anything about it after I heard her No one knows Virginia like Arlene wow. knows Virginia. <laughs> Great. And we have one more right there, yes. I'm going to go home and organize my computer files. And what, did you take an organization class today? Yeah, I took the class uh, Leland uh, Mertzel, Metzel. Meitzler? Mm -hmm. Meitzler, yeah. Everybody use, can use that class at some point, isn't it true? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, one of the, the points I wanted to make in kind of doing that is just one to kind of see what you're getting from the conference, but also to really bring home the point that learning shouldn't just be a once a year conference, should it? Now, thankfully, Holly's expanding conferences, so we're getting multiple conferences of kind of around the country because there's been quite a demand for it. But I really want to, to kind of encourage you that this should be that inspiration that says, you know, I am going to stay committed. You know, some small percentage of my research time is going to be spent with continual learning. And I was much talking about this in one of my classes that I really think that the only reason you should ever have a brick wall is because you stopped learning stuff that was new. And you stopped you know, going to classes or, or reading magazines or doing whatever you do to kind of get up to speed because there's always something new around the corner, isn't there? Particularly with the internet. So um, I wanted to let you know that one of the ways that you can do that, that's a free online resource, in addition to podcasts, are genealogy blogs. 
And you know, there's a lot of tremendous synergy that goes on. And then this is, and of course, this is the big bonus of an expo, is you're getting together with real life people. You know, not just your Facebook friends, right? But you know, I see Mark Tucker, and I think I see Mark Tucker's blog and his face every day, and I think, but I get to see him in person at least once a, once a year at the conferences, and, and that's really cool. And, and there is something, it's, I've heard stories of people, like you say, meeting a cousin or, or saying, oh, the expo is a, a chance to facilitate a meeting with a cousin. So um, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. We are going to be talking to some experts that um, I've wrangled into this first live show to talk about um, blogs and what's new and what's online and ways that you can kind of keep yourself moving forward and getting up to speed. So that brings us to the next hand-raising question, which is, uh, how many of you have read a genealogy blog? Oh, so we have a lot of people to convert, but I'm very impressed. You know, a year or two ago, that would not have been that many hands, would it? Um, but you know, really, blog is just well. We'll have our guests explain it, but it's not as complicated as it may sound, or as kind of techy. There's, it's very, very accessible, and of course, they're free. That's good. We like free. So we want to get that synergy going tonight, and. I want to get you an opportunity to see some of this in action. So let's get right to it. I want to talk about my first guest who's on the show tonight. She is the editor of World Vital Records e-newsletter, and she is the coordinator of a, a synergizing website online, which is Genealogy Wise. And of course, she also writes her own family history blog. So please give a warm welcome to Gina Philibert Ortega. All right. Well, when I was thinking about genealogy blogs, you came to mind. <laughs> and because you're one of those people that have kind of gone online and seized the opportunity, you really kind of had a vision of what the interaction and the synergy could look like in an online form. And I think that you've made it a very warm and, and personable environment, particularly in genealogy wise. And I know I love her. Do you see the World Battle Records e newsletter? It is so packed with information and the new records that are coming out. So um, that's a wonderful place to go. And you can sign up and get that free to your, to your email. So let's talk a little bit about blogs. And okay. we have your blog live. That's right. Do we? Yes, we do. Shall we go online? I think we should. That's my blog. And I took pictures of some people. They will recognize themselves. Uh, right before this started, and I blogged a little bit about what we were doing here. This is so cool because this is the immediacy, right? So if you wonder kind of, you know, what's going on and who's in the know, it's a lot of times it's people like Gina who are online blogging, and it can be up in a split second. It can be up in the same, you know, class that you're in. And I just thought that this would, look at these smiling faces. This is awesome. Now, was this hard to start doing? Now, you know, when I go give presentations, I tell people, you really need to start a blog, either for your group or your surname, because honestly, it can take five minutes to start. The hardest part about a blog is coming up with the name. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm not very creative, so my blog is called Gina's Genealogy. That's as creative as it gets. That's good. But honestly, that's it, because uh, places like Blogger make it so easy for you you're basically just typing in a box like you would on your regular word processing program. And there's templates, so you don't have to design anything. I can tell you I know nothing about web design, and I did this. My children have their own blogs, so I, and I realize that you know children tend to be more advanced technologically than we are, <laughs> but it really is very, very simple, and it's a fast, easy way to keep your family or your friends or whoever involved. And, and there's really, I think of genealogy blogs as there's kind of two, there are two types. Uh, they're almost the new message board, if yes. you will, aren't yes. you? Because we used to, we post a lot of the things we were looking for on a message board, but really by creating a blog about your own research and putting up your family and your documents and everything, you then become 
food for Google and for search engines right. and for other people who might be looking for those names, am I right? Exactly. If you want to do a blog for your surname, Google's going to pick it up and then that's going to help people to find you because genealogy is about networking, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to sit by yourself and never network with anybody, you're not going to get very far. But the blog allows you to. And there's so many blogs out there. You know, you can start a blog, but there's blogs out there about locality research, there's surname research. Uh, some of us have blogs that are more how-to. Uh, for example, mine, I'm doing a series on 52 weeks of genealogy sources where I go into depth about different sources. So there's so much you can do with blogs. Exactly, and that kind of brings me to that idea of the continuous education. You know, rather than just, you know, kind of getting it once a year and that's, that's it. Right. And you say, well, okay, I'll do that again next year. But all the people, many of the people that are teaching, you know, Holly, who runs the expo, she's got a blog. She's always putting out things. Yeah. So there's putting out your own family to be found. And then yes. there's um, tapping into those people who are kind of in the know who are writing about it. Like Arlene, right. uh, if you love the Vir Virginia class, you go to her Virginia blog and you get Arlene all year. What could That's be right. better, right? <laughs> so, so, that, so tell us now, just to real quickly, just in case anybody is still not familiar with a blog, okay. give us the, the quick synopsis, what is blog? Okay, my opinion is that a blog is like a website, except that people tend to update theirs more frequently because it is so easy. It's meant to send out a message. Um, sometimes it's very short. It might be an article, for example. So it's almost like an online journal without having to get too personal if you don't want to. Um, so that's kind of what I see it as. And, and when you post a page, um, it, it can be subscribed to. And every time you post, the old one moves down and the new one goes on top. Yes. And it's like a running newspaper articles kind of, right? That's right. As you scroll down on mine, for example, you'll see everything that I've posted. That's the newest. But then earlier today, there was another posting. So you just keep scrolling down. And Actually, people can comment. So more if you that, see something, you can leave a comment for the person who's, who's yeah, blogging. Okay. In fact, on mine, I do have the comments turned on. But you know what? If you decide to start a blog, and maybe you don't want other people's comments, and a few of, of, of us have had troubles with um, spammers and such, you can turn that feature off. You can also, I like to point this out, that even though it is a good idea to have your blog be public, especially if you're doing surname research, you can make it private. Right. Um, you know, just for your family, maybe? Just for your family. And so what happens is you tell Blogger that you want it to be private. Right. And so you have the URL address, and you give it to the people that you want to see it. Uh, a good example is my kids have a homeschool blog. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to right. see it uh, who aren't family members. And there is no way you could find that exactly. because it's a private blog. So either way you do it, it's just such an important tool to get the information out there. So when they head back, after the lady does iGoogle, then yes. she's going to want to go looking for genealogy blogs, right? That's so right. how do you go online? Uh, we've heard word that there are hundreds of genealogy blogs, but say um, if I have ancestors in Texas and I want to make sure that I'm kind of up to speed on a certain county, okay. how do I find the person who's blogging about that? Okay. There's lots of ways to find blogs. So let's talk about Google, since both of us love Google. Oh, yeah. Um, there is a Google blog search. So just Google, Google blog search. And then you can do the search engine just like you would for Google. And you can choose a locality. You could choose a surname. You could put in the word genealogy. It's going to give you tons of hits, but you could do that. So that's one way that you could find a blog that's specific to your needs. Now, let's say you just want to see what genealogy blogs are out there. There's several ways to do that. One is there is a website done by Chris Dunham. It's called Genie, uh, Genilog, and he has a blog. He also has a genealogy blog finder, and I think when I looked the other day, he had something like 12 to 1,500 blogs he lists. And not only does he list them, he lists them by category, and then he tells you when they were last updated. Because you might find a blog, but if it hasn't been updated in a few years, then that might not be. Yeah, sometimes you people start them. and they do them for a while, and then they might and then stop. They stop. Yeah. Exactly. So that's one way to do it. Now, one of our guests tonight is Thomas, and yes. Thomas runs uh, the Genie Blogger site, and he also has a blog roll of about 800, I believe, genealogy blogs. And so you can look at his blog roll and choose a genealogy blogger that you want to follow. 
You can also go to sites like my blog and see other bloggers and who they're following. Because, and you can also see their blog roles, and that might give you ideas about who you want to follow also. If you can go, is it, would it be hard to go back to the blog for just a second? I can go back to it. One thing, she's making a really good point. You see these happy faces here on the, on the right-hand side? You can scroll up, there you go. These are people that are following Gina's blog, which means they subscribe to it so that they automatically get an email anytime she posts a new article. And so chances, oh, Genealogy Gems follows yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so chances are the people that are following this blog, if you like this blog, they probably have similar tastes to you. Click on their face and see what their blog is. Many of them are bloggers. So that's one of that, the power, I think, of the internet, right. isn't it? Is you kind of follow the people that share the interests that you have. Exactly. It's yeah. part of that networking that's so important. So finally, yeah. if, if we've narrowed down and, and we've gone to a blog finder, we've gone into Google, we've, we've found a couple that we like, tell us real quick to wrap up how to subscribe. How do okay. we do it? Because sometimes we bookmark and then we never go back. <laughs> That's right? right. That's right. <laughs> or we forget, why did I book that mark out in the first place? Okay, so. good. she's got it. Okay, there's a few ways you can do this. Usually people do it through uh, something like Google Reader yeah. or blog lines, where you can subscribe to a reader and you can look at several blogs at the same time. One of the big bloggers is Randy Seaver, mm -hmm. and he reads 800 blogs a day. So one day I said, Randy, how are you doing that? You know, are you eating lunch and everything? <laughs> and he said, well, of course, but he uses blog lines, and that aggregates the different blogs. So he reads a little bit, and then if it's a topic he's interested in, he reads the whole blog. Now, one way you could subscribe to blogs is usually there's something that says subscribe to. It also might say RSS feed. You click on that. And you can subscribe that way or go through your Google Reader account or your Bloglines account and add the blogs that you're interested in. So you could just go to Google.com, type in Google Reader, get yourself in there. If you already have a Google account, you That's can right. sign right in. And one of the ways you know that it's a subscription is you see that little orange button with the, the sound waves. And that tells you that that's a su subscribable website. Does that sound right? That's right. You know, I think, I think of it this way. It's almost like customizing your own newspaper. You know how the yes. newspaper editor sits down and he decides, you know, which articles are going to be on the front page and that kind of thing. This is like you take a Google reader yeah. and you go and pick the ones and then they'll deliver the articles to you and you have this kind of customized online newspaper every day. Well, and it makes it fast. So you're not going from website to website. If I want to read Arlene's, I can read all of her blogs and Mark's and I have it all there in one place. Exactly. I don't have to go from website to website and spend all day trying to read all this great stuff. You guys are going to be busy when we're done with this convention. Thank you. You know, you can see why I invited her. I so appreciate oh, getting the blog up so quick. And please give her a warm welcome. Thank you so much. Well, if we are going to explore the world of uh, online genealogy blogs, we really can't do that without talking to my next guest. And Gina already alluded to that guest. He is a self-professed techno geek, as well as genealogist. He's an author of, get this, nine genealogy blogs. And of course, he is the founder of the geniabloggers.com website, please. Give him a very enthusiastic welcome to the genie blogger himself, Thomas McKenty. that you started, I remember, at the Jamboree, Jamboree I think, last yeah. year. Jamboree. Yes. We all had red, white, and blue beads. It was right near July 4th, and we just went kind of crazy with them. So. so when you put on your beads tomorrow, you're going to go, oh, you were in the banquet, weren't you? Oh, That's you right. were in the banquet, weren't you? Got your little bobble <laughs> cactus beads here. So those <laughs> are from so uh, 
Bible. They're from uh, Mardi Gras Outlet.com if you're ever interested in <laughs> ordering. So, yeah. oh, oh, good. They're taking photos because our uh, listening audience is going to go, what is yeah, going what on? Is going I hear jingling. Here. What is going on? Yeah, have a seat, sir. Great. Um, I understand that you have a, a top 10 list for us. Yes, a la David Letterman. Yes, go oh. for it. Hit us with it. Okay. So number 10, a genealogy blog is difficult to set up and maintain. So it's, is it too hard to set up and maintain? I just got the hang of email. No. The answer is actually Blogger, if you know blogger.com. It's the most popular blogging site. It is free. It's owned by Google, and anyone can set up their blog in less than five minutes, guaranteed. You'll be up with your it's first true. post. It is true. Five yeah. minutes, yes. Yeah, five minutes. All right, number nine. Number nine is there are too many genealogy blogs already. I can't possibly read and keep track of them all. I can't remember where I put my car keys. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are using bookmarks or favorites to follow in your web browser to follow genealogy blogs, you should look at something like Google Reader. Yeah. It's a great application. Uh, my site, genealbloggers.com, of course. Yes. And also, yeah, on my site, I break down not only, it's actually, we're closer to 900 blogs. 900 week, blogs now? But I break them down by geography, by state, by country, oh, by ethnicity. Wow. There's actually crafts and scrapbooking, all different types of blogs. So you can actually narrow down the type of blog that you want. So. Great. And a break. Blogs. Even gene genealogy blogs don't contain useful information for genealogy research, and you can't exactly cite a blog as a source. Is that well, a myth? It is, it is a myth that you, you know, it is a myth that they don't contain useful information. Uh, I would never cite a blog as a source citation, but very often I can find content that will lead me somewhere else where I can find a primary source or a secondary source or indirect evidence, direct evidence. So basically, you should not rule out genealogy blogs for information. Perfect. Number, Number seven. Number seven. I'm just not creative, and blogs require fancy graphic colors, uh, colors and fonts and graphics to be attractive to readers. Did anybody think that in their mind when they started hearing about, oh, you can have a blog? Yeah. yeah a couple. Actually, the truth is, when you sign up with Blogger or WordPress, they have these templates that are all built in. You know, purple, they're based on color, they're based on season, they're based on geography, and uh, purple, gold, and green, yeah. <laughs> the Mardi Gras colors. These are all free, they're easy to install, and you know, then you can start adding things little by little. You also look at other blogs, like Lisa's and Gina's blog, and you see something you like, and just email them. Say, where did you get it? You know, I really like this graphic. You know, you're listing followers on the side. I don't know how to do it, and it's easy as that. I think that is one of the best tips if you decide that you kind of want to dabble and give it a shot, is find a blog you do like, right. whether it's style or content or whatever, and ask that person questions. They will be so, I, wouldn't you say they would be so They'd flattered? Be flattered. Absolutely. Actually, when people ask me, I really like the way you did this, get the information away for free. I mean, it's yep. free. The, the application itself is free. You know, there's no reason why I should hoard it and hold it close <laughs> to me, so great. I am not a techie programmer. To me, Java is just a pot of coffee, a uh, <laughs> cup of coffee. I don't know how to set up all those gadgets I see in other genealogy blogs. That's what we were just talking about. It seems like they are adding more and more gadgets. Yeah, I have they the, look more complicated. I have Twitter on the side. I mean, now I display all my tweets on the side, and there's so much you can have. There's actually a 20, uh, there's a 1940 census countdown clock that people are putting on their blog. Oh, I see heads. That Not everyone well. knows about it. Yeah, it counts day by day how many days are left until they release a 2012 <laughs> census. So, I mean, you can have every type of gadget on your blog. Sometimes people have too many gadgets where it's like a busy box and I'm forgetting the post on the center. But there's some great gadgets out there. Because I, I would probably agree that you, you have to have a balance. Yes. Otherwise, it's a really fun one-time trip, but you right. don't come back to visit. Exactly. You have to have content, right? Somebody's exactly. sharing something. Right, and that's, content is what's going to pick you up on Google. Content is what's going to have followers, and yeah. keep your followers and readers, yeah. definitely. Number five, uh, I run it, I'll run out of ideas, and I certainly couldn't blog every day. Who do you think I am? Dick Eastman. <laughs> now, if you know who Dick Eastman is, Dick Eastman is Eastman's online genealogy newsletter. Uh, just turned 14 the other day. 14 years. 14 years. 
It's amazing. And, uh, and he does Has blog. the internet been around for 14 years? Yeah, I actually mean, it has been, yeah. He was and, on the early Yeah, he was on very serve. early. And he does put up about five or six blog posts a day, but this is what he does. That's his main focus. There's no rule that says you have to blog every day. We have some people that blog once a week. I know some woman doing Arkansas obituaries that she transcribes, and she may do 30 posts in one day, but that's once a month. You know, because she, she does it when it's convenient. She does her transcriptions, and then she just posts them all at once. The other thing is you can also pre-post on a blog. Yeah. You know, right now I've been I'm away from Chicago for five days. I have posts coming up every day, in fact, twice a day, that I've already scheduled. I know. It's like he's teaching a class, and I'm like, how is he posting that? He's in class right now. Right. How do People you do it? How do I Twitter when I'm asleep at 3 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Well, it gives that aura of working all the time. <laughs> the mystical yeah. blogger. Exactly, yeah. How do so. you do that? You you can tell it, I want, um, it's all done, right. but, but post it at this time on this right. day. You basically, you still okay. publish, but you say, I want this date and this time, and then Blogger or WordPress takes care of it automatically, and it just goes out. And Wonderful. Out. Yeah. Okay. Number four, I cannot write. Don't even get me started about my spelling and grammar and punctuation. Readers will take one look at my blog and wonder, who let them online? <laughs> this is one of the biggest myths, myths, and I think one of the biggest hindrances to people to start blogging. They say, I don't know how to write. I didn't, I didn't finish high school, I had some woman tell me. I never finished high school. I got a GED. I don't know how to write. The thing is, you should just write. If you start reading other blogs, people know that. The more you read, the better writer you become. And I can know. attest to that yeah. because I, I was a little nervous. I don't think of myself as a, as a writer per se, but I knew right. I wanted to get out there and tell people what was going on. Right. And not only do you become a better writer by your own writing, and of course I have Lacey proof, proof everything, yeah. but don't you find by reading other bloggers, yeah. you start to, and, and really I would recommend, I think, in your own voice. Yeah. What do you think? I do. Yeah, I think people want to know. They want 3D ancestors. They want to know a well-rounded ancestor. They want to know the personal stories. They want to know how you feel about interacting with your ancestors. So really do it from a first person. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to move your mic oh, over okay. just a little I'm bit. Sorry. That's right. okay. Great. It's, it's nope. hitting the bling. No, yeah, it is hitting right. the bling. Number three. <laughs> Genealogy bloggers are way too cliquish and don't welcome outsiders or newbies. I got enough of that in high school. And actually that could be the furthest from the truth. That's what I felt when I blog started blogging over three years ago. Really? I thought, you know, this group, they seem so cohesive. They have a lot of fun all the time. They always have these carnivals, which I never understood. <laughs> blogging carnivals. And uh, all these events online, they're not going to, you're not going to let me belong. You know, the, yeah. reindeer, the whole reindeer games. Well, and they can comment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, basically. Well, they can comment on each other's blogs. And so then it's like, oh, well, she's commenting on hers, and, he, and right. but nobody commented on mine right. today. You know, That's actually how I got started. I had two of the uh, long-term bloggers comment on one of my posts, and it just took off from that. And basically, very welcoming into the fold. I mean, like I said, we have 900 different blogs, uh, and, you know, all over the world. I mean, it's funny. Yeah. I, I'm going to bed at midnight, and my people in New Zealand and Australia are blogging and tweeting because of the 18-hour time difference. So you're not, you can't sleep anymore then? No, I can't. That's what it no, is. No, okay. no, that's the rule. <laughs> Number two. Number two. No one will want to read my genealogy blog. I can't get, even get my brothers and sisters <laughs> to look at pedigree charts. So actually, that's another common fear. More people read your blog than you would realize. I mean, you can track the analytics, the Google analytics. Yeah. Uh, I was amazed. We just had our first anniversary of Genie Bloggers. We had 730,000 hits for the year. Wow. And uh, so, and you know, you can check the back end uh, analytics on that. But really, I, you know, just do the content and do it from your heart. You will get people to read, you'll get people to comment, people to follow. Absolutely. Yeah. And what is the number one myth? Number one, it is expensive to run a genealogy blog. I'm still trying to explain my tax mail why I spent $600 on birth certificates last year. Again, as I said, you know, the major platforms, Blogger and WordPress, are free. All the applications, the gadgets on the site are free. The only thing it costs you is your time, really. I mean, I don't have enough time to blog, post on all my nine blogs, but that's really all it is. And, you know, if, if you've ever wanted to get into it, and just, you know, contact me at GeniaBloggers.com. We're always willing to help. And I can actually match you up with other people with the same ancestral research areas, and they have blogs. And, yeah, it really, I said for the past three years, it's really has made a big difference in my research. 
really has. And I have to say, Thomas is like the ultimate cruise director of bloggers, of genealogy bloggers. So go to genealogybloggers.com because not only can he, he will reply. You know, he looks like he's busy, and we know you are with nine, yeah, but he does exactly. reply, yeah. and he gets back to you, and he'll say, oh, I know somebody who's doing that. Here, let me get you in touch with them, and you'll be right in there moving along. It's like an old Yenta. That's what I am. <laughs> you know, a matchmaker. Well, so. this is wonderful. You have dispelled the myths. I hope that it uh, removes some of the shackles that keep us from giving it a try. I hope so. And we're going to send him out of here because Holly has him booked to at teach eight at 8 a.m. Holly does not know me very well. She booked me at 8 o'clock. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, uh, but I am teaching how to use genealogy blogs at yeah. 8 o'clock. And you will learn, uh, you'll have links to over 100 blogs in the syllabus. And uh, it, it's great. you learn how to use Google Reader. And uh, it should be a good time. It, this was a good time, yes. right? Thank great. you. Thank, Thank you, you, Thomas. Thank you. All right, well, one of the terrific things about doing a gene uh, having a genealogy community is um, that we really do support each other. Thomas is a, a living, breathing example of how supportive the community is. Uh, so there never has to be fear about jumping in and getting your feet wet. And I, I want to take a moment right now to uh, introduce someone to you who really does exemplify this idea of the genealogy community. He is the founder and president of the incredibly popular genealogy software, Roots Magic. I know you've seen it in the exhibit hall. And I am really excited to say that he is the brand new sponsor of the Genealogy Gems podcast, and that is Mr. Bruce Busby. Come on up here. Hold that. Yeah. Is it on? Yep. Well, we'll flip our switch. It's not. There we go. Well, I, I'm excited because uh, you know one of the things is doing the podcast. You know, it's a free show first and foremost, and it's important to me to keep it that way and, and to get good information out. But it's hard to keep it going. And if you've ever tried to follow some podcasts out there, they have something called pod fading. And eventually the person says, look, I either need to get a job or my husband's going to kick me out or something, you know, because it's hard to keep it going. And, um, but we've built up an audience with Genealogy Gems. And when Bruce came along and said, I like what you're doing and I'm willing to, to sponsor you, uh, I'm just so excited because he's now an integral part of the family. He's going to be the reason why this show keeps coming to you free this year. I really, really appreciate it. Well, we've been big fans uh, of the Genealogy Gems podcast for a long time, so you know we just decided we wanted to support this and help you keep it going. I, I really do appreciate it, and you know that's that's what you're known for. You're at every single expo, uh, right up front, the big green and white sign, right? Well, and here, here we are, and this this uh, last year you launched a brand new version of Roots Magic, which is already so popular and everybody's using it. So. Tell us, what's new about it? Why do we go to Roots Magic 4? Well, what's new about it is everything. I mean, we totally rewrote the whole program. Uh, we basically took our version 3, and we just kind of set it aside, and we started over. That's why it took us three and a half years to write it. Wow. So we added a lot of really nice little features. Uh, probably the most popular feature we added uh, is the ability to run it on a flash drive. We have a Roots Magic to go, a little program that comes with it. And you can actually install the program, your databases, everything right on that flash drive so you can carry it. You have everything with you. Uh, you go to a friend's house and you can, or library, you just plug it into the computer and it runs. They don't, that person or that computer doesn't have to have the program on it or anything. It just automatically runs right off the I, flash drive. I got one of these at the last expo and it's a little flash drive. And I had a chance recently to go into Salt Lake City and I got to spend the day at, at the Family History Library. Oh, that was slick, because <laughs> it was like I had everything with me, and it was just in my pocket. It wasn't this big, huge laptop I've been lugging around. That's awesome. What yeah. else is new? Well, there's a lot of things that are new. Like I say, the whole thing, um, the interface, we tried to keep it fairly close to what we had before, uh, but the things that we thought could be improved, we did. We added DNA support. We added uh, what we call shared events, which some programs might call witnesses, where uh, multiple people can share the same event. 
Um, so a lot, of, a lot of new features, a lot of things to make it easier to use. And then in November, we actually um, had a big announcement. We released a free version of our Roots Magic program. Uh, we call, it's called Roots Magic Essentials, and what it is is it's kind of a light version of Roots Magic, um, but we left in the, th the parts that we felt were essential to genealogy. So the, the, the great source handling, our source wizard, which will uh, write sources for you in evidence explained format. You just fill mm -hmm. in the blanks and it writes it properly formatted source. We feel like sources are essential, and so that's all in there. Um, you know, all the essential reports, all of that are in that, and it's a completely free version of the program. There's no, um, no strings attached. You can go just go to our website and download the free version. Um, it, it, it asks you for an email, but you don't even have to give that. So like I say, there's no strings attached at all. It runs forever. It doesn't have a time limit on it or anything. It's funny, when he, when he first told me about that, I was like, wait a minute, you can't just start giving it away for free. And then I, it made me think of that commercial, try it, you'll like it. I mean, yeah. isn't that what it is? It's because once you see kind of what it can do, and, it, and it's so much has been added to it. Now, if they want to try out, they want to test drive Roots Magic 4, you can do that for free too before you give them your credit card, right? I mean, you can well, try yeah, it out. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, that's basically what that this, essential? that's what this free version is. Okay, this free version, is, like I say, it's a completely free version. It works exactly like Roots Magic Essential, or just like the full Roots Magic, except, you know, there's a few of the, a few of the really fancy features that we've left out, you know, the ability to create shareable CDs and, and you know, some of the, some of the fancier reports, things like that. You know, we got we to gotta do something to try to, you know, trick people into, into <laughs> buying the whole thing, you know. Ah, the we'll, we'll, we'll admit, we'll admit. But, but the, the, the Roots Magic Essentials is totally free, no strings attached. So it's, it's rootsmagic.com slash try? Right, yeah. That's where you can actually go and download uh, Roots Magic Essentials or trial versions of our other stuff. Wonderful. And if you do it and if you decide to get it, let him know you heard about it on the podcast, right? So he'll keep taking good care of us. <laughs> That's Bruce, right. thank you. Thank you so okay. much. It's been wonderful. Okay, thank you. Yay! <laughs> oh, he's a nice guy. I think everybody knows Bruce, right? You've seen him in the, all the uh, expos. And what I love about it is that he... Um, designs this thing. I mean, he's the, the lead programmer, and, and his website, is, there's constant conversation going on, so you know that whatever comes out in the new version was based on people like you who use it, and then give him that input, and they just keep putting it in there. It's wonderful. Well, if you have been researching your family history for five minutes, you've probably heard of Ancestry.com, right? <laughs> And you are going to be hearing a lot more about them in the coming year because they've got a lot of new things up their sleeves. And to tell us more about it is the PR and events manager for Ancestry.com. Help me welcome Anastasia Tyler. <laughs> and Anastasia, I am feeling very proud to have you on my show because uh, this is not the only show you've ever done. Have a seat, my lady. And tell me, uh, she was on another show recently which was almost as popular as the Genealogy Gems podcast. What was that? Um, I, this week, got, had the opportunity to share with Martha Stewart on the Martha Stewart show a little bit about her family history. Um, <laughs> she, you did. Actually, I don't get a chance to watch Martha as much anymore because I'm typically working at that time of day, but I was over at my new grandson's house, and I was babysitting, and so we were patting and trying to get a burp out, and I started doing the remote, and I see this, and coming up next, and I saw, and I saw your face, and I thought, I just saw her last weekend because uh, you sponsored a lot of us bloggers yeah. to come out and visit Ancestry. Yeah, um, uh, two weeks ago, actually. Yeah. We have what we call a bloggers day, and... Um, unfortunately, we can't um, have all 900 genealogy <laughs> bloggers down at our facility, but we were able to bring in nine um, for a full day, but behind the scenes tour, full day, it was packed. Thomas and um, Lisa can tell you how pack, packed um, that day was. I kept, I had them start the day at 7.30, and I think we took them back to the hotel around 9 yeah. at night, so it was 
it was a long day, but they got to see behind the scenes and it, keep keep following their blogs to learn more about the behind the scenes at Ancestry. They they'll uh, you know post from time to time. She is a bigger taskmaster master than uh, Miss Holly, who put Thomas in an eight o'clock class. <laughs> they had us at seven thirty to go, yeah. and we kept. And but it was really it was a wonderful behind the scenes and. And uh, in fact, if you go to Thomas's blog, my blog, um, you can kind of read about what we learned, which there was, there's so many new things going on. And, and I want to start with the fact that since you have recently, was that your television debut? Uh, no, it actually wasn't. I've, okay. I've had the opportunity to be on um, a few like news broadcasts, but, but I guess that was my largest debut. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it seems like, well, Ancestry, have you been seeing the commercials? There have been a lot of commercials now coming on, it's, and I see that and I go, ooh, it's getting more mainstream and people, more people are going to be thinking about doing their family history. Um, and there is more coming to television that Ancestry is involved in, so tell us how we can find that. Yeah, well, one of the things that we're really very excited about is there's a TV show that's been over in Britain for several years. It's very popular. It's called Who Do You Think You Are? Um, and NBC has recently announced that that show will be airing on NBC starting on March 5th. So we're just a couple weeks away. And Ancestry.com has had the opportunity to be um, a partner with NBC to help with the research of that show. And basically, if you, if you haven't seen the show um, from the UK, I highly recommend it. And I would especially recommend the, ver the show that has Jerry Springer on it. And you say, Jerry Springer, is he British? <laughs> Actually, he was born in London. Um, really? He was. He oh. was born in London to Jewish immigrant parents who fled Nazis, the Nazis coming into Germany. And um, one of the things that breaks my heart that he talks about is his dad decided to come to Britain because he thought that if the Nazis were going to take over the world, they'd get to France before they got to Britain. Mm -hmm. And it would take them longer to get to Britain. And so that's why his dad chose Britain. And they were one of the lucky few to get into Britain. Um, and so he... This episode, and I highly recommend it, it's already aired in Britain. It's maybe a year old now. And um, it will change your view of Jerry Springer because the stories of what his ancestors went through going through um, the Holocaust is amazing. And that will just give you a taste of what um, to expect in a few weeks and who do you think you are. It's going to be a fantastic show, and um, it, it goes through several celebrities. So um, Sarah Jessica Parker, uh, Susan Sarandon, other, other celebrities... Um, you can they walk through their family histories and you can see um, the stories in their family tree. And, you know, one of the things that I think is fantastic about Ancestry.com, about the blogs, about all of the different, like, these, these expos and all of the different organizations that are out there promoting genealogy is we can really see that genealogy is becoming more and more popular. And also a younger generation is getting into family history and really embracing their roots. Um, and I... This TV show, along with everything else that we're doing, has the potential to, you know, help help more people understand what family history is. One of the things I love most about my job is to show somebody a 1930 census for their grandparent for the first time and how awestruck they are by just that document. And, you know, we can all, in our own way, reach out to people and help them see how amazing family history is. That is so true. And I, I think... Jerry Springer is a wonderful example of that for the very reason that you have a, a characterization of him in your mind, don't you? Just the, the whole persona on, okay, none of us watch Jerry Springer, but you know what I'm talking about. He's a little wild and crazy, but the thing is, and I think you can catch at least excerpts of some of those shows um, on YouTube, but you watch him and you see that transformational power of the story, and you see him as a real person, but not just... And he's a nice guy to begin with, and then you see what it means to him to go back. And, and, and that happens to all of us at some point, doesn't it? It just digs down in your soul and grabs your heart, and, and it, it, I think that's what, what, I guess, keeps us going back, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, so when we have those yearnings and we want to find more, and, of course, we, we go to Ancestry because we want to find more, and one of the things I was so impressed with when I went there was the number of people that were scanning and screens with, you know, 16 documents and, and all the things, they, and they're so efficient about it. And you'd be surprised, many of them are quite young yes. and, and yet seemed very passionate about what they were doing. So 
So tell us, they were working on some stuff, and I know some of it's under, under the wraps, but in general, what should we be looking for that might be coming out new at Ancestry? Oh, that's a great question. Well, we're, of course, we're always, always working on something new, the newest and greatest thing. And one of the biggest things that we're always working on is content. Every week, we launch new content. There's always something new coming down the pipeline. And what you can look forward to, it's definitely, you know, a focus on um, vital records, you know, birth, marriage, and death records, so important. Um, it, it's a challenge in the United States because there are 50 different states who all started recording vital records at different times, and they all have different privacy laws. So that can be a challenge. Um, and, and we all know that as genealogists. So definitely, you know, you can look forward to vital records and just more records just across the whole gamut of record types and always looking for something new. Um, another interesting thing we just launched, you may have seen an iPhone app um, for your a mobile family tree. So that's something that I, I oh, it launched this week. Um, yeah. I think I was on an airplane somewhere <laughs> <laughs> when it launched. Um, and, um, you know, keep an eye on search. Um, we're always making improvements to search and changes, and um, we have some exciting things that we think are coming down for search, so keep an eye on search. And um, one of the fantastic resources on Ancestry.com is the Ancestry blog. If you haven't checked out the blog, mm -hmm. this is where our product managers, the people who are actually finding content, who are building the website, who are, you know, the product managers, they're out there, they're, they're telling you what's new on Ancestry. They're talking about what they're working on, and... Um, Go read the blog. It's going to give you up-to-date information. And not just the blog, but all of the bloggers. Um, I have a growing list of genealogy bloggers that I communicate with on a regular basis. You know, And, I, and when we launch new things, um, with the exception of the iPhone app, because I was on an airplane. So. <laughs> we forgive you. That's okay. <laughs> um, you know, we'll, we'll let them know. We send out announcements. and they're no, So they're another great way to find out what's new on Ancestry.com. Yeah, I'm one of the lucky ones because I get to hear from Anastasia, you know, as soon as she's got the A-OK -okay to get it out there. And so, you know, I'm blogging and, and Thomas is blogging. And so if you find a couple of people who are kind of in the loop and, and subscribe to their, their blogs, you're going to be one of the first ones to know. I mean, all of a sudden you see Arkansas marriage certificates just came up and I'm like, ah! And you can run and go do it. So it kind of helps you uh, know when it's time to, to visit back and yeah. see what's new. Absolutely. Awesome. Keep an eye on the blogs. Well, thank you for taking time out of your schedule with Martha and coming to visit with us today in the show. I really appreciate it. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. I appreciate it. Well, as you've uh, heard me say before, that brings us to the end of the show. And I hope that this uh, live podcast episode. And I have to say, I'm getting addicted to live. Uh, can you guys all come to my house? I have room. And it, it's really nice in California, so we could do outside, do barbecue. It, it's so much fun to see you guys and, and to be able to interact while we're talking about our favorite subject. I hope that we have uh, dispelled some of the myths, that we've given you some tools and some friendly faces that you know that you can come to and count on and check in with for information. And I hope that uh, it was fun to see. I, I know it was for me when I got to go visit Ancestry, but Anastasia is, is so wonderful and, and generous with you know, the news about what's coming out. And they've just got so much coming down the pike. It's, it's amazing. So never a day goes by that something new isn't coming on. And, and there's hope that you will find that elusive ancestor that you've been looking for. So what I want to tell you is, is for every episode that we do, we produce show notes on the website. So you can go to genealogygems.tv and you look for the most recent episode or for past numbers. And I'm not sure if this will be 79 or 80, but keep an eye out. We'll keep you guessing and you come and check. Uh, in the next week or two, couple of weeks, this is actually going to be um, uploaded and it will be available to listen online. So you'll hear your clapping. Good job. <laughs> you guys were amazing. <laughs> And I do want you to stay in touch with me because I'm like Thomas and I, I will write you back and I will uh, answer questions. And it, better yet, I want you to call my voicemail line. Uh, it's 925-272-4021. You can leave a message or a question or a comment and then you'll hear yourself on the show probably. And I want to thank my very, very special guests for joining me here at this live taping. 
Gina Philibert Ortega, thank you so much, Gina, and Thomas McKenty and Anastasia Tyler. Please give them another round. <laughs> and of course, our good friend Bruce Busby for making it all possible. And even, even more is our dear leader of the Family History Expos, which is Holly Hansen. Holly, please stand up and just let us thank you. And most of all, I do want to thank you, all of you, in the listening audience, whether you are here live in person or whether you're listening on the show. And um, it takes all of you to make the show possible and wonderful events like Family History Expos to make it possible. And uh, I think, I don't know, how did they do? Well, considering that I didn't even have to use the applause sign, <laughs> I think that shows some, uh, some intent in their uh, motivation here. Well, okay. Uh, for everybody in our live studio audience today, you are going to all receive a free three-month subscription to my premium membership. Those of you who attended the class, yeah, okay, you know what I was talking about. That's all yours. Uh, the premium membership is typically um, two new audio podcast members only exclusive club that's not on the iTunes feed and um, videos as well as we have a message board. I even have genealogy themed crossword puzzles for you, okay? And on the premium videos, if you attended my classes and you want to see what I was talking about again and see it online, um, if you go to the next screen, you can see a list of all of the videos. We have a complete series of genealogy gems, the Google series, 12 videos, I guess. Each one runs about 10 minutes. So you tell yourself once a day or once a week, you're going to sit down with a 10-minute video and learn a new skill. And the new series, and this is going to follow up to um, Holly's letting me launch a brand new class tomorrow. It's called Google Earth, Solving Family History Mysteries with Google Earth. And you can, that's what it is. You just click on it and play the, the video. If the phone rings, hit pause, come back. It's, it's, it's there at, at your convenience. So everybody's going to get a free three-month membership. As you head out the door, you'll be handed a certificate, and you just need to follow the little instructions and e send me an email so I can send you your, your username and password. And I believe that uh, Gina also has a little gift for us as well. Everybody in the studio audience is going to receive a one-month free subscription to World Vital Records. Thank you, Gina. You can download a lot of records in one month, people. <laughs> and if you like it, then she also has a wonderful discount. It's 25% off the annual um, subscription rate. So that's a special one for you. We're going to have both the certificates for you out um, as you end, leave the, um, the room. And I want to thank Thomas for our, our blog. Oh, I don't have mine on. Mine are at the table. But when you have your beads and you can go around and, and greet each other tomorrow, be sure and wear them tomorrow. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And as I always end my podcast, thanks for listening, friend. I will talk to you soon. Good night. One more. One more.